In our practice, we inform 100% of patients who undergo cataract surgery that they'll experience the following four symptoms on the day after surgery. Number one, their vision will be just slightly blurry, maybe not perfect on the first day. Number two, they'll feel a little scratchy sensation akin to an eyelash rubbing their eye. And that's usually due to dry eye that's common after surgery. Number three, they'll notice a flicker or quiver to their vision. And that's due to the lens kind of jiggling slightly in the first week or so after surgery. That typically goes away within a week or two. And the fourth symptom that they'll experience is a shadow or arc or crescent out to the side of their vision. This last symptom is known as negative dysphotopsia. Every lens implant used in cataract surgery can cause this side effect. Patients with negative dysphotopsia typically describe the classic symptoms of a temporal arc or crescent or shadow out to the side. So if they've had cataract surgery here, they'll notice it out to the side here. If they've had cataract surgery on their left eye, then they'll say, I notice an arc, crescent, or shadow out here. And the classic exam trick is we'll ask the patient, when you put your hand out to the side, does the shadow go away? And they'll do that and they'll go, yeah, miraculously, it disappears. That's classic for a negative dysphotopsia. Now, the typical evolution of ND is that it goes away within one to two months as the eye heals and the brain adapts to seeing through the new lens implant. Rarely, however, some patients notice that the negative dysphotopsia or the shadow persists indefinitely and it doesn't disappear. Fortunately for most of these patients, the symptom is so subtle that they adapt to it, they learn to ignore it, and it doesn't bother them that much and they go on about their way. For less than 1 in 2,500, maybe in the range of about 1 in every 5,000 patients, they will see a negative dysphotopsia that persists and does not go away. And they'll be so bothered that they want a solution to make it go away. So in this video, we'll discuss how we treat negative dysphotopsia. So what causes negative dysphotopsia? First of all, it usually occurs when surgery has been performed safely, routinely, it was uncomplicated, and everything was performed normally. So a common question that the patient will ask is, did something go wrong? Is that why I'm seeing this shadow out to the side? And we just reassure them that this is a normal side effect that most people experience after cataract surgery or lens replacement surgery, and that symptom will gradually resolve over a one to two month period. There are two factors associated with negative dysphotopsia. Number one is the design of the lens implant. So this is an example of a lens implant, and as you can see, the implant has an edge to it. And as light enters the eye, if it hits as light enters the eye and it hits the edge of the implant, then light can reflect off the edge of the implant and create a shadow that the patient perceives as a dark crescent arc or shadow, which is the negative dysphotopsia. Number two, the space between the lens and the iris. And as you can see in this illustration, there is a normal space between the lens and the iris. And as light enters the eye obliquely and enters that space, then the light can reflect again off the edge of the implant and create the negative dysphotopsia shadow. The best treatment for ND is prevention. We found in our practice that the Bausch & Lomb LI61AO lens, this is our standard basic monofocal lens used in basic cataract surgery in our practice. It is a three-piece lens that, due to its design, simply does not cause much negative dysphotopsia. To date, I've placed over 5,000 Bausch & Lomb LI61AO lenses and have had maybe one or two patients state that they have persistent negative dysphotopsia beyond the two month after surgery point. Neither of these patients required additional treatment of their ND because their symptoms were relatively mild and well tolerated. Now the most commonly used lens implant in the United States and around the world is called a single piece acrylic lens or SPA. 
This lens is used in all astigmatism correcting, also known as toric lenses, and presbyopia correcting lenses currently on the market. These are examples of single piece acrylic lenses. They're made of one piece of molded acrylic plastic. And this lens design, in my experience, is associated with a higher rate of negative dysphotopsia than the three piece LI61 AO lens made by Bausch & Lomb. So, all of our patients who receive a premium presbyopia correcting lens or an astigmatism correcting lens in our practice will receive a single piece acrylic lens. This lens design, in my experience, is associated with a higher rate of ND than the LI61AO. Let's talk about the worst case scenario. The patient has a negative dysphotopsia and is very bothered by it, and the symptom, which is described as a crescent arc or shadow, is present all the time and is not getting better after waiting three months or more. Then there are, in my opinion, three options to manage this situation. Number one, if the patient has an SPA, then remove the SPA and replace it with an LI61AO lens. In my experience, that treatment works almost every time. Number two, if the patient has a lens inside the bag, then we can place the lens between the bag and the iris into the ciliary sulcus, moving it closer to the front of the eye and thus decrease the space between the iris and the lens. Number three, what if the patient, however, has a premium single piece acrylic lens that is correcting both presbyopia and astigmatism and the lens is only designed to be placed inside the capsular bag. Well, there are two treatment options in this situation. Placement of a piggyback IOL in the ciliary sulcus or reverse optic capture. So let me present this case to you of a patient who had persistent, very bothersome negative dysphotopsia. This is a 49 year old gentleman who had lens replacement surgery on November 11th, 2019 with a panoptic toric lens. Prior to his surgery, his measurements on November 2nd, 2019 were uncorrected vision of 2040 far and J16 or 2200 near. His refraction was minus 0.25 plus two at 105, yielding 2020 vision. The original surgery performed on November 11th, 2019 was routine and uncomplicated. Four months postoperatively, he reported the classic symptoms of ND that were persistent ever since his first postoperative day visit. These symptoms included that he could constantly see the edge of his lens, and he was very bothered by this phenomenon. So we performed reverse optic capture on April 29th, 2020. His uncorrected vision and refraction on the day of his IOL reposition was 2030 far and J2 or 2030 near. His refraction was minus 0 0.25 plus one at 115 yielding 2020. We find that we cannot initially place the viscoelastic cannula between the anterior capsule leaflet and the lens implant. So we use a two-handed technique where we lift the anterior capsule edge with the Donenfeld and then inject viscoelastic, ocucoat viscoelastic underneath the anterior capsule. Once we've placed OcuCoat between the anterior capsular rim and the implant and created a space, we then place a small amount of viscoelastic behind the implant as well to create a little bit of space between the posterior capsule and the posterior surface of the implant. We then use a cyclodialysis spatula to lift one edge of the implant and place it anterior to the anterior capsule leaflet. We perform that maneuver for one side of the lens and in order to recreate that same maneuver on the opposite side of the lens, we place the cyclodialysis spatula through a second side port incision and gently lift the right side of the implant anterior to the anterior capsule rim. 
So at this point of the procedure, the the right side of the implant from one o'clock to five o'clock and the left side of the implant from seven o'clock to 11 o'clock is now anterior to the anterior capsule of the capsular bag. Meanwhile, the lens haptics remain inside the capsular bag. This is creating the configuration known as reverse optic capture. We then vacuum out the viscoelastic from the anterior chamber. The iris, which is entrapped behind the lens optic on the right, is liberated by pressing the lens optic more posteriorly toward the retina, and that maneuver moves the iris anterior to the lens implant shown here. So this astigmatism correcting panoptics lens is in the correct alignment and we take a moment to inspect the alignment and position of the implant to make sure that the implant is indeed anterior to the anterior capsule in the area that is obscured by the iris and the pupil at this point. Visual confirmation is completed and the patient is sent home and is followed up on the next day. The patient on post-op day one was amazed with his vision. The negative dysphotopsia and edge of the lens effect were completely gone and his vision was improved as well. His uncorrected vision was now 2020 far and J1 plus or 2020 near. His refraction was minus 0.25 plus 0.75 at 115 yielding 2020. This case illustrates the technique to perform reverse optic capture for treatment of negative dysphotopsia in a patient with a panoptic toric lens. Thank you for your time and for your attention, and have a wonderful day.